Okay, so remember I have the original name and I have the cleaned names for each one of those. It ended up being about two and a half million records um, that we analyzed. And so I calculated the C values, completeness values for the raw and the cleaned. And then I asked essentially how much better or how, how much difference is there simply as a result of fixing up the taxonomy. Well, the no difference point is right about here. And what you can see is that essentially in all cases, for every pixel ac across Brazil, the C value improved when we cleaned up the taxonomy, or when the botanist cleaned up the taxonomy, I should say. And in some cases, we're talking about 5, 10, 15 percent improvement. Okay? So right away we see the value of some of the data cleaning. We're not going to worry about that this afternoon when you guys start playing with your data. But if you want to play more seriously with your data, you need to do it very carefully. Okay? The other thing that is going to be relevant in a minute is that we were looking at the interaction between sample size and these raw and clean C values. And essentially what we see is that big samples make for more complete inventories in either way. Okay? So, we started out looking at Brazil by ecoregion. And all, the, all of this next set of slides that you're going to see, the shades of blue, the darkest blue you'll see, which is most of this map, means a very high completeness value. And near white means near zero. So basically what you can see here is just a couple regions that are a little paler, but at the level of ecoregions, the completeness value for individual ecoregions across the whole ecoregion the completeness values are pretty high. We can do the same thing at the level of states. And you can see the numbers are incredible. You know, Sao Paulo State, quarter of a million plant records. You know, even up here in the Amazon, 53,000. Um, so there, there's, some, there's some really exciting density of data here. And it's thanks to a lot of investment by a lot of people in Brazil. But this is still very, very, very coarse. So let's, let's start to break it down. If I go to a grid-based system, I think this is one degree, immediately, boom, I've got some gaps where my C values are essentially zero. Okay? You can see fairly high values here and fairly lower values here but we're still aggregating over really big areas. If I go to this level, now I start seeing more emphasis in that eastern area. I start to see bigger gaps, and I start to see a lot of gray as soon as I come off of the, off of the eastern seaboard. And when I go to this level, I essentially basically see that Brazil botanically is known along the coast and around Brasilia, in Goiás, guys, okay? But much of the rest of Brazil is unknown, okay? So, the next thing that we did was to start looking at the other side of the coin. That's geography, and now we want to look at the environment. So this is just kind of a basic exploration of what um, environments in Brazil look like. That's a plot of precipitation versus temperature for these pixels. And you can see these, these environment plots tend to be really irregular and they'll have arms and, and legs and things. They're kind of funny. Um, and then this map requires a little bit of thinking. It's basically a map of how different 
the climate at each one of these points is from all other points. So these points that are very sparse out here are going to be bright red. And these points that are very dense are going to be blue. Okay? So this is kind of interesting because, remember, our gaps were here in the Amazon. But if you look at this, where we get a lot of pixel-to-pixel -pixel turnover is out there along the eastern coast. And in the interior, we tend to get quite a bit of continuity of climates, similarity of climates. Now there's some artifact in there because there aren't tons of weather stations, but this, this picture is mostly true. And then we had to refine our estimates just a little bit. We had to decide essentially what is well known. I wanted to make this binary. I wanted to say here's the set of pixels that are well known. So we looked at relationship between species richness, um, observed and expected, as a function of number of records. Okay? And we looked at the completeness values as a function of number of records. And this was all, you know, kind of by eyeball. Where do I set a cutoff? We ended up, we probably should have picked something out near four or 5,000 records. And in that case, Brazil would have been totally unknown. Yeah, this is a fairly um, few number of pixels. But we decided, okay, let's go kind of back here. So we set it at 500. And obviously we could explore moving that around, but we used 500. And so we essentially came up with a set of pixels that based on sample size and based on completeness index, we believe are defendably, in some sense, well sampled. And so what this pair of maps does is it shows us three things. They have the same set of pixels marked in black. And those black pixels are the ones that are well known. Okay? Decent sample size, decent C value. And what you see is that they're all along the eastern seaboard, a little bit in, in the federal district in Goyas, and then very scattered in the interior. So that's the first thing you have to see, where the well-known pixels are. Okay? And then the second thing is this map. This is a very simple map. It's a map of geographic distance to the nearest well-known pixel. And so you see around every black point, it's blue because they're close to a well-known pixel. But as you get farther from a black dot, you get to red. And so those are things that geographically are distant from well-known pixels. Okay? This map is a little harder to think about. We're going to go back to here and imagine on this plot, imagine that I were to light up all those well-known pixels. Okay? And you know, there'd be some scattered around here and there. Not many. But imagine I were to make those bright red. I'm sorry I didn't do that, but I didn't have the data files with me. So what this map here is, is the dissimilarity in environmental space of this pixel from every well-known site. And so I'm taking the, the lowest dissimilarity value, the shortest distance in environmental space to a well-known pixel. Okay? So, now we've got two different views and probably complementary views of gaps. That's a spatial gap and that's an environmental gap. These red areas are environments that are poorly sampled in the botanical knowledge of Brazil. I can put those together, which I've done here. I didn't really know which to weight more heavily. 
You know, is, is climate difference more important than spatial distance? I don't know. So I just scaled them to the same maximum and minimum and weighted them equally. But you could obviously play with those weights. But essentially what this is saying is these red areas are far from well-known sites and different from well-known sites in terms of climate. And then we can probably do some prioritization of these red sites even. You notice that a lot of the border has strings of red around it. That's because, well, a lot of the Brazilian border is, is fairly remote. Um, and so survey effort in these states has been clustered out here. But we have to be careful about overemphasizing those gaps because it might be right here in Argentina or right here in Uruguay, somebody has a nice big collection. So you have to be a little bit careful of thinking about Brazil as a continent unto itself. Although the Brazilians sometimes do that, right? Um, so we need to be a little suspicious of those red areas around the borders because we don't know what's outside there. Those other countries haven't done this exercise with their botanical data. But then let's take the final step and let's relate this map to coverage by primary vegetation, okay? And so it's a little hard to see because you're seeing two different things, but you can see the, the, the red ramp that we just saw in that map. And then on top of that is essentially primary versus disturbed, okay? So where the red map, the distance map, gets kind of pale, here, down here, that's where the landscape is mostly disturbed. And where it's kind of intense, like out here, that's where, at that pixel resolution, the landscape is pretty well preserved. So, now we can see our red areas, like that one there in the, in the south central Amazon, I mean, that, that's, a, that's pretty spectacular, okay? It's a huge area that hasn't been surveyed. But you can see that's got a lot of intact forest still. Not for long, but it does. And so that's a view at a finer resolution. You can see the disturbance. You can see the roads and all of the spread out from the roads. Also in the Amazon, rivers are a big corridor, so you see some disturbance out from the rivers. But then down here in the south, you see essentially the opposite. The whole landscape is destroyed, and it's just little patches here and there. So our survey priorities in these areas might be focused on where do we have the most complete and most representative and most intact floras and faunas, because that might be a, a superb conservation opportunity. And at the other end of the spectrum, down here, it's more rescue. I mean, which of these fragments has any chance? Which of these fragments have those very rare species? That something for nothing paper was done right here, so you can see how empty it is of um, intact fragments of, of primary vegetation. But essentially, you see, we kind of have a, a, a split personality. Areas with huge intact stretches of unknown flora, but then also areas with relatively unknown flora that are totally destroyed and you're just doing essentially rescue. Any questions about the Brazil example? You guys are really quiet. Okay. It is 11. Um, 
I think I only have a few slides left. Let me just finish this off and then we'll take a break. Um, actually, there's one more point I want to make to you here. As these papers come out, two of them are accepted for publication and two more are being written. There are going to be, there are going to be some people who scream bloody murder. Okay? And it's going to be, I've got data from those regions. How can you say that's unknown? I've got data from there. I did all these collections. This is all getting taped. It'll be on YouTube in a month. Okay? And those people are going to scream and cry, but why didn't you? How can you do this? You've insulted me. You've ignored my life's work. Well, guess what? If it isn't digital and if it isn't accessible, it doesn't exist. Okay? It's time to grow up. Listen to me. Time to grow up and share your data. <laughs>